Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we will actually continue to study the highest weight representations. So, indeed we will prove that uh, uh, any highest weight representation, finite dimensional representation must be irreducible. So, here is the outline of the proof. So, let us start with V being finite dimensional highest weight representation. So, let us say it is generated by uh, V which is of highest weight, uh, highest weight vector, highest weight vector of highest weight lambda. So, since uh, V is finite dimensional, we already proved that uh, lambda must be dominant. So, V is finite dimensional implies lambda is dominant. So, that means this, this, those weights from lambda such that mu of h i takes non-negative integral values for all i from 1 to n. So, now if we take this uh, finite dimensional highest weight representation, then we consider Casimir operator and then we actually prove that uh, the Casimir operator is going to act as scalar on this uh, finite dimensional highest weight representation. So, this is what expected if we want to prove V is irreducible because Casimir operator we already shown that it is a G module map from V to V. Since V is being irreducible, if we are expecting to be irreducible, then we know that that Casimir operator must act as scalar. So, let us say the Casimir operator actually acts as some C lambda. Okay. The first thing to prove this C lambda is independent of the highest weight representation that is chosen. It depends only on the highest weight lambda. So, that is the first observation we make. So, first observation. So, this C lambda the constant is independent of the choice of highest weight representation. Okay. So, because it is independent of the choice of lambda, so C lambda will be given in terms of uh, lambda, indeed lambda of hi. So, then we will actually analyze so what will happen to given finite dimensional highest weight representation. So, if we take V to be finite dimensional highest weight representation of lambda okay, may be associated with lambda. So, then if it so given any finite dimensional representation one can easily prove that it must contain irreducible sub representation. So, for example, you can consider the collection of all uh, G sub modules of V and then take the smallest non-zero module which has smallest dimension. Okay. So, if we collect all V dash, okay, let us say V dash is G sub module such that the dimension V dash, so this is non-zero sub module that is important, such that dimension of V dash is smallest possible. Okay. So, that means this V dash must be irreducible, otherwise it must contain some proper sub module that will actually have that is that will be non-zero proper sub module and that will have dimension smaller than the dimensional V dash. So, we, we do not want that. Okay. So, basically what we mean by this, this is the minimum of dimension of w, w non-zero and w is being sub representation. Okay. So, then it is easy to see that V dash is an irreducible G sub module. Okay, that is immediate. 
So now if we take this Casimir operator, we know that the Casimir operator must act as some scalar on this V dash. Since any fire dimensional irreducible representation is high straight representation, so we can see that if V dash corresponds to let us say some mu, so that means it is generated by a weight vector that has weight mu, so that is let us say generated by some V dash, V dash has weight mu. So then what will happen? So this C V restricted to V dash, so that must be acting as scalar, so that scalar will be given by C mu. But already we have uh, C V acting on V as C lambda identity on V. So, this forces that C mu must be equal to C lambda. So, now what we do? So, we will calculate this C lambda very explicitly and using the information about C lambda and lambda and mu being both dominant because mu is being highest weight uh, for this uh, irreducible model V dash which is finite dimensional. So, mu must be dominant. So, that will force that lambda is same as mu. So, we already observed that the dimension of this top highest weight space corresponding to this lambda is one dimensional. So, that will actually tell you that. So, this V dash is indeed inside C V. So, that will force that this V dash must be equal to V. Okay. So, this is the outline of the proof. Uh, so, we have to actually check uh, one by one. So, for all this uh, ideas, uh, we have actually very explicitly used the computation of this Casimir element, how it acts on capital V. So, we are actually going to do that uh, very carefully. So, before that, let me recall what we have proved so far. So, if you start with V being finite dimensional G module. Okay. So, we already observed that there are two different uh, forms that we have introduced on uh, SLN plus 1. So, indeed uh, they are actually multiple of each other that we also that also we have verified. For example, we have this killing form. So, which is given by the trace of add x add y. So, this is the killing form and we have verified that. So, this killing form is indeed multiple of trace form that the trace form comes from the usual representation of SLN plus 1. So, it is a product of matrices x y and then you take the trace. So, then we observe that the killing form differ by this trace form by multiple of 2 n plus 1. Okay, this is something we have already verified. So, because of this uh, we can actually always work with uh, one of the forms that does not matter. So, we will choose to work with trace. So, in all classical books that you see on Lie algebras, so, so Humphreys or Carter and so on, they all use killing form in order to actually do the computation because the killing form is very natural form that actually defined on the semi simple Lie algebras. So, it is one of the important characterization of the semi simple Lie algebra that says the corresponding killing form is non degenerate. But here uh, we have explicitly computed it and we verified that the trace form is non degenerate. So, we will actually use the trace form. So, we take the trace form. So, let us call it uh, B. So, B of x y is nothing but the trace of x y sorry trace of the product. So, this is what we call as trace form on SLN plus 1 C. So, we already know that this is indeed non degenerate form, non degenerate symmetric G invariant bilinear form. So, in particularly we can actually define Casimir element uh, with respect to this form. So, we start with the basis. So, let x1 etcetera xm be a basis of g. Okay. This m is 
chosen to be the dimension of SLN plus 1. Okay, we already know what it is, but I am just denoting it by m. So, now given this basis, so we have this corresponding dual basis, we call it y1 etcetera ym. And the dual basis is actually with respect to the killing with respect to the trace form. So, in particularly if we take B of x i y j, we get delta i j. So, this is what this is the meaning of uh, y 1 etcetera y m being dual to x 1 etcetera x m. Okay, this equation is important. So, now recall that the linear transformation that is defined using these x i's and y i's that is called Casimir operator. So, the Casimir operator C v of v is defined to be the summation x i v y i v acting on v. Note that we have this representation. So, there is a map from g to j l of v and the image of x we denoted by x v. So, now this i ranging from 1 to m. So, this is how you define the map C V of V. So, this is the Casimir operator. And we already verified this operator actually commits with the action of G. So, so this is something we already proved. It, C V is indeed G module map. So, not only that it is independent of the choice of the basis. So, it is independent of the choice of x 1 etcetera x m. Okay, this is something we already verified. So, now we will use this actually to compute. So, how the Casimir element act on given uh, highest weight representation. So, note that, uh, so we have to actually choose some nice basis uh, of our uh, uh, Lie algebra. So, we will actually choose the basis that comes from the root spaces. So, so we take, so here is the theorem. So, suppose V is a finite dimensional highest weight representation. Okay let us say generated by V of weight lambda. So, this is the weight vector which has the weight lambda. So, then one can claim that this Casimir operator acts on entire V as scalar. We call that scalar C lambda. Okay. So, this scalar is independent of the representation. Okay, that is the most important. So, we will give actually very explicitly explicit formula for this and uh, we will do that while computing it. Okay. But most important thing using the formula one can immediately see that it is the it is indeed independent of the representation that we choose. So, ultimately we will prove that okay. So, given this highest weight representation will be irreducible and once you fix lambda which is dominant then there can be only one highest weight representation that corresponds to the highest weight lambda. So, in particularly so, whatever the scalar that we are going to get should be independent of the representation that we begin with okay? because there is only one representation that corresponds to lambda. So, how do we do this computation? So, let us start doing the computation. So, let us fix some notations. Uh, so, you have this uh, natural uh, identification using the PBW theorem. So, where V is coming from V lambda. So, this is the highest weight space 
and we already know that the dimension of V lambda is 1. This is something we already observed. So, now uh, what we are going to do? We are going to choose a basis of uh, uh, G SLN plus 1. So, we stick with the standard basis. So, that is a basis coming from the root space decomposition. So, there is this basis of G. So, which is given by H1 etcetera Hn and recall that H i is nothing but E i i minus E i plus 1 i plus 1. And now, you also have other basis. So, something corresponds to actually positive roots. So, if alpha is in phi plus, if you write alpha as epsilon i minus epsilon j with i less than j. So, then the x alpha is nothing but E i j and then similarly you have y alpha which is nothing but E j i and this also again corresponds to alpha in phi plus. So, all these collections will form a basis of S L n plus 1 c. Okay. So, that is something we have already seen. Now, we also computed very explicitly. So, what will be the trace of E i j E l k? So, using that computation you can easily see that uh, the dual basis of this. So, we just call it H 1 star etcetera H n star okay, that is the dual of this H i and then it is easy to see that if you take x alpha the dual of x alpha will be y alpha and similarly for y alpha the dual will be x alpha. So, that is easy to verify because the trace of E i j E j i is 1 and if you take trace of E i j with any other E l k. So, that is going to be as, as far as this uh, uh, l k is different from i j it is going to be 0. So, using that one can verify that x alpha is dual to y alpha. So, it is a simple computation I will leave it to you. But the most important thing, so we have chosen this H1 star etcetera H1 star as dual of this H1 etcetera H1 with respect to the trace form. Okay, This is with respect to the trace form B. Because it is with respect to the trace form, we have the following formulas. Okay, So, this will just let me write it down. So, if you think about it, uh, if I actually take this map from H2 H star, so we can actually define this H goes to B of H comma dash. Okay. So, I will leave it as exercise, it is a very simple exercise. If you restrict the trace form uh, to the diagonal matrices in SLN plus 1 C, then that is again non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form. Okay, so, here is the exercise, it is a very simple exercise, you restrict B to H cross H. Okay, so, then it defines actually symmetric bilinear form and that is non-degenerate form, non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form. In particularly, you are able to identify H with H star using this following map. So, H goes to this evaluation B of H comma dash. So, that defines indeed actually the identification between H and H star. So, now if we take some let us say some mu here, then the inverse image of the mu we call it H mu. So, basically how the H mu is defined. So, H mu defined by B of H mu and applied on any H should be exactly equal to mu of H because so H mu is just the inverse of mu with respect to this map, okay, this uh, evaluation map. So, so H mu is indeed defined using this equation. So, now if you use this, uh, then we can easily see that. Uh, Uh, we, we will actually do the computation with respect to uh, these two bases. Okay. So, now let us go back to that uh, uh, Casimir operator. So, let us write down what it is. So, then C v of v is going to be, so recall the summation x i y i acting on v. So, now uh, for 
for for those things we have this different uh, uh, basis elements so in particularly we have uh, summation this is corresponding to the carton hi hi star i range from 1 to n plus summation x alpha y alpha alpha coming from phi plus okay so this is acting on v and this is acting on v so this is what we get it from the casimir operator but note that when alpha equal to epsilon i minus epsilon j and again i comes from i j comes from 1 to n plus 1 such that i less than j so then x alpha is nothing but e i j and then y alpha is nothing but e j i and if you take the bracket x alpha y alpha then that is nothing but e i i minus e j j okay so because of that so we can call this element h alpha because this uh, corresponds to epsilon i minus epsilon j so now using this you can easily see that whenever you switch x alpha y alpha you get y alpha x alpha plus the bracket x alpha y alpha so which is h alpha so y alpha x alpha plus h alpha so this is what you get whenever you switch so when you compute uh, the cv on uh, this uh, highest weight vector so this is the highest weight vector so what we know about uh, this uh, v so recall by definition of highest weight vector of weight lambda so hv act as lambda of h for all h in h and xv is 0 for all x from n plus so this is the definition of highest weight vector so using this if we compute cv of v you can see that so this first equation actually translates to summation lambda of hi lambda of hi star times v and then the second equation so we can actually switch this to y alpha x alpha plus h alpha but x alpha comes from n plus so because so this is actually coming from n plus so this is going to kill v so only h alpha if at all it is going to contribute so that means so this is going to give you summation lambda of h alpha alpha from phi plus times v okay and oh sorry we also have another sum uh, that another sum actually just vanishes so we have this uh, third sum uh, x alpha y alpha times v sorry y alpha x alpha times v where alpha coming from again phi plus so the very first sum corresponds to h and this sum corresponds to n minus sorry n plus and this sum corresponds to n minus because we have three types of basis so this is the first type this is the second type and this is the third type so we have to run over all these three types so then if you do that then we can see that we ha have this uh, uh, three sums and since x alpha v is 0 so this sum already vanishes so now using this we conclude that uh, cv of v is exactly equal to this now what's about this uh, first first uh, scalar so let's actually uh, try to actually compute it and then see what it is so if you think about it so lambda of uh, this uh, ei i minus ejj so this is going to be so let us write lambda in terms of the epsilon i basis so if you write it in the epsilon i basis so then you can actually easily see that so this is going to be some a1 epsilon 1 plus etc plus a n plus 1 epsilon n plus 1 so i have already told you before so only the restriction matters so this is always modulo the space uh, epsilon 1 plus etc epsilon n plus 1 so so we can choose uh, these ais so that we can write it in the epsilon a basis so now if you if you think about it this lambda being actually uh, functional 
on h star. So, lambda of ei i minus ejj is going to be exactly so la a i minus a j. So, if you are not comfortable in you using this uh, epsilon i basis, you can also write it in the alpha i basis, there is no issue. So, for example, if I write this e i i minus e j j in terms of h i's, then you can easily see that this is h i, h i plus 1 plus etcetera plus h j, because h i being e i i minus e i plus 1 i plus 1. So, you can easily see that uh, this difference is going to be this sum. So, in particularly this lambda of this e i i minus e j j is going to be lambda of h i plus etcetera plus lambda of h j. So, one can also use uh, this uh, alpha i basis. So, then this is uh, let us write it as some c 1 lambda of h 1 sorry c 1. So, we want to write it in the dual basis of that. Okay. So, if you want to write it then this you are writing it in the fundamental weights c n omega n. So, recall omega i is the dual of h i's, the dual of h i's. So, that means omega i defined using omega i of h j to be delta i j. So, using this equation one can define omega i's. So, these are called fundamental weights, fundamental weights. So, now if we use uh, uh, these uh, fundamental weights, you can actually uh, uh, see that uh, this lambda of E a i minus E j j is given by the sum of these numbers, which is exactly C 1 C i plus etcetera plus C j. Okay. So, note that these are all non-negative numbers. So, this sum will be non-negative integer. So, now uh, let us look at this uh, first sum very carefully. So, if we take uh, this identification h with h star, then B of h mu uh, applied on h is actually mu of h. So, using that uh, one can actually rewrite uh, this this term. Okay. So, recall lambda of h is nothing but b of h lambda h. Okay. That is how uh, the dual h lambda is defined. So, now using this you can see that lambda of h i is nothing but b of h lambda h i and uh, lambda of h i star is nothing but b of h lambda h i star. Okay. So, this is all just by definition. So, in particularly the first sum that we are interested in. So, let us call this as first sum. So, this is the first sum. So, then that is going to be equal to summation b of h lambda h i b of h lambda h i star. Okay, where I range from 1 to m. So, now note that if you write lambda h lambda in terms of uh, the basis h i's, then write it as some let us say r 1 h 1 plus etcetera plus r n h n and then h lambda again can be written as uh, sum of elements using this uh, h i star. So, call it s 1 h 1 star plus etcetera plus uh, s n h n star. So, then it is clear that so this number uh, b of h lambda h i is going to be exactly s i and this number is going to be exactly r i because b of h i h j star is given by delta i j. Okay. So, because they are dual to each other, so you get uh, this uh, equation. So, this is summation s i r i, i range from 1 to n. 
but if you think about it b of h lambda comma h lambda is exactly equal to summation s i r i because this h i h i star they are dual to each other. So, this is exactly b of h lambda h lambda, but what is b of h lambda h lambda? So, that is going to be exactly the trace of h lambda h lambda. So, that is the trace of h lambda square. So, now if you think about it actually if you write h lambda in terms of the, the standard basis E i i. So, because h lambda is a diagonal matrix, so one can write it in, the, in terms of E i i basis. Then let us write it as some let us say some d 1 e 1 1 plus etcetera plus d n e n n plus d n plus 1 e n plus 1 n plus 1 because we are considering n plus 1 by n plus 1 matrices. So, then it is clear that the trace of h lambda square is nothing but d 1 square plus etcetera d n plus 1 square. Okay. So, this is the uh, expression that we will be using. So, you write your dual element h lambda in terms of the standard basis, then the first sum the scalar becomes very explicit in terms of that. So, now look at C v of v. So, again there is this second sum, the second sum also we need to understand. So, what is about the second sum? If you think about the second sum, second sum is nothing but summation lambda of h alpha, alpha coming from phi plus. So, now this is nothing but summation lambda of E i i minus E j j, where i less than j less than or equal to n plus 1 less than or equal to 1. But lambda of E i i is nothing but uh, the ith projection. Okay. So, there is a close relationship between lambda and h lambda. Maybe let us write down everything in terms of h lambda because we got this uh, first sum in terms of h lambda. So, if you think about it, uh, so what is your uh, this lambda of E i minus E j j? So, this lambda E i i minus E j j is nothing but B of h lambda comma e i i minus e j j. So, this is nothing but b of, so this is in terms of the trace form, trace of h lambda times e i i minus e j j. So, since e i i minus e j j, it is a diagonal matrix which has 1 on the ith place and minus 1 on the jth place. So, if h lambda being a diagonal matrix, so this is going to be exactly giving us the ith entry minus the jth entry that is d i minus d j. So, so this is exactly summation d i minus g d j where i less than j less than or equal to n plus 1. So, we have very explicitly how this c v of v acts. So, c v of v acts as some c lambda v. Okay. So, where this uh, c lambda given by, so this is small c. So, first you take uh, the trace of h lambda square. Okay. So, this is what we are taking. So, that is uh, summation d i square i range from 1 to n plus 1. Then you take the second sum i less than j so, that d i minus d j. So, this is what c lambda very explicitly. Okay. So, this is as explicit as possible in terms of lambda because h lambda is determined by lambda. Okay. This is nothing to do with the representation. So, that means this scalar c lambda is independent of note that. So, this is independent of the representation. 
okay. But we still have not told why uh, that C V acts as scalar. So, we already know that V being uh, V being uh, highest weight representation, V can be spanned by the following vectors y beta 1 power r 1 etcetera y beta n power r n. So, where you just uh, order the positive roots as beta 1 etcetera beta n. So, this is the order set of positive roots. So, then if you take the various powers of these uh, vectors applied on this highest weight vector, then you get uh, the spanning set of capital V. So, now if you take any w from capital V, that w is going to be sum of these y beta 1 power x r 1 etcetera y beta n power r n times V. Now, if you apply C V of w, then you can easily see that, that C V of w, of w will pass through the sum as well as this product, because C V is indeed G model map. So, it commutes with the action of G. So, so this is going to be exactly sum of this y beta 1 power etcetera y beta n power r n and then it goes all the way and then act it on v. Okay, but we already know that how it acts on v. So, that acts as c lambda w. So, this proves that for any w in w, c v of w is given by c lambda times w. Okay, it is as explicit as possible. Okay, and given in terms of lambda. So, we will actually use this information uh, in order to actually conclude uh, that uh, our given highest weight representation irreducible. So, we will do that in the next class. I will stop here. Thank you.